He is known for being a French composer and virtuoso on the flute. He specialized in the bassoon and flute, holding the flute to the left, which was uncommon at the time. His name is Michel Blavet. In the world of music, one name stands out as a legend, Michel Blavet, the French composer and flute virtuoso. Born with a natural talent for music, Blavet's passion for playing instruments knew no bounds. While he could play almost every instrument, it was the bassoon and the flute that truly captured his heart. What set Blavet apart from others was his unique style of holding the flute to the left, a technique that was opposite to what most flutists do today. Blavet's extraordinary skills caught the attention of none other than Johann Joachim Quantz, a renowned German flutist and composer. Quantz was so impressed with Blavet's talent and warm personality that he described him as amiable and engaging. Their friendship blossomed, and Blavet's gratitude for Quantz's kindness knew no bounds. Throughout his career, Blavet composed numerous notable works, but one of his most profound contributions to the field of music was his innovative flute compositions. His compositions showcased the versatility and beauty of the flute, pushing the boundaries of what was considered possible on the instrument. Blavet's compositions became influential in shaping the future of flute music, inspiring generations of flutists to explore new techniques and expressiveness. One cannot underestimate the impact Michel Blavet had on the world of music. His virtuosity, unique style, and groundbreaking compositions continue to resonate with musicians and audiences alike. Blavet's legacy serves as a reminder of the power of individual talent and the ability to push the boundaries of artistic expression. His works remain a testament to his remarkable skill and unwavering dedication to the flute, forever enriching the field of music. Born on March 13, 1700, Michel Blavet, the son of wood Turner Jean-Baptiste Blavet, followed in his father's footsteps for some time. However, his life took an unexpected turn when he stumbled upon a flute and discovered his extraordinary talent for playing the instrument. In no time, Blavet became renowned as the finest flute player in all of France, admired for his impeccable intonation and the beauty of his tone. Even Voltaire himself expressed his admiration for Blavet's playing, while Marpurg hailed him as a virtuoso of the highest excellence, who remained modest despite his immense popularity. In 1726, Blavet joined the Duke of Carrigan and became a part of the newly formed Concert Spirituel. His talent was quickly recognized, and in 1728, Louis XV granted him the privilege to publish flute sonatas for six years. However, by 1731, Blavet had moved on to serve Louis, Count of Clermont, becoming his steward of music. During this time, he performed at the Concert Spirituel alongside other esteemed musicians like Jean-Marie Leclerc and Jean-Pierre Guignan. By 1738, Blavet had become the principal flute player in Louis XV's personal musical ensemble, known as the Musique du Roy. He also joined the Paris Opera Orchestra in 1740, where he played in the quartet that premiered Telemann's Paris Quartets. Despite receiving an offer to serve at Frederick the Great's court, Blavet turned it down, allowing Quantz to take the position after the pay was significantly increased. In 1752, Blavet made history by creating the first French comic opera, Le Jolo Carige, drawing inspiration from Italian interludes. Blavet's passion for music extended beyond performance. He wrote a march for the Grande Loge after joining the Masons under the influence of the Comte de Clermont, who served as the Grand Master of the Order in France. Additionally, Blavet's three recules for two flutes, although undated, are believed to have been composed in the early 1750s. These collections, along with his Op 2, provide valuable insights into 18th-century French musical phrasing with their inclusion of breathing marks. Michel Blavet's musical journey came to an end in Paris in 1768, leaving behind a legacy of exceptional flute compositions. Do you want to explore more composers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.